In 1871, Tempe founder Charles Trumbull Hayden chose a place where the river narrowed between two buttes to establish a ferry, providing the area's only reliable water crossing. Hayden's mill, built at the base of the Southern Butte, used the nearby Salt River water as the power source for his new business. A railroad was completed in the late 1800s, but constant flooding weakened the bridge and it collapsed, as did its replacement. In 1906, work began on the dam that would finally slow the floodwaters of the unpredictable Salt River and provide a consistent water source for the growing valley. Located in the narrow canyon 60 miles to the east, Roosevelt Dam was dedicated on March 18, 1911 by its namesake, Theodore Roosevelt. Through the next several decades, the Salt and Verde Rivers were dammed in several more places and the water was diverted for agricultural, industrial, and domestic uses. The once flowing Salt River was transformed into a barren wasteland. The riverbed was, was really kind of a scar. Uh, in order to make sure that it was it presented an image that we would like to, people to have of Tempe, I thought it was important, I think everybody in Tempe thought it was important, that we do something with, with the riverbed. In 1966, a group of fifth-year architecture students at Arizona State University was challenged by the Dean of College of Architecture to create a plan that would combine flood control and environmental design. The purpose was to convert the Salt River from an urban scar to a major asset in the metropolitan area. Presented in public for the first time the following year, the students had a concept and a name, Rio Salado. The student's final report concluded that the Salt Riverbed was underdeveloped and unplanned. They wrote, the Rio Salado has given Phoenix its life. Now Phoenix can return life to the river and benefit greatly from that act. For men of vision and leadership, this is a noble goal, one that is within reach. As our enthusiasm grew, and we could see the benefits to be derived from bringing life back to the river. Uh, we just naturally reached out in every direction to, uh, to make it happen. With solid backing from community leaders, Rio Salado went to the ballot in 1987. Maricopa County voters were asked to support the vision of lakes, parks, and development through a property tax increase. That proposition failed two to one. In 1987, we had a countywide vote to, de to do the whole Rio Salado from uh, the, the most eastern end or through Mesa and the western end. Uh, that failed, of course, and, but it passed in Tempe. And as a result, we said, you know, we're going to go ahead with this program anyway because it passed in Tempe, and Tempe realizes how important it is uh, to our future. A groundbreaking ceremony near Tempe Beach Park marked the first step toward construction of the Rio Salado project since it was first proposed more than 20 years earlier. A channel would be created to finally contain the floodwaters of the Salt River, protecting the new Loop 202 freeway, and making more than 800 acres of land in Tempe available for development. I don't think we had much of a choice. It wasn't land that we could just disregard and throw away. It was the entryway to the city. It was uh, how many people viewed the city of Tempe to begin with. In 1994, Harry Mitchell stepped aside after 16 years as mayor of Tempe. His successor, Neil Giuliano, quickly focused on Rio Salado. Sensing that the opportunity for building Tempe Town Lake had arrived, Giuliano brought city staff and fellow council members together to develop a financial plan that would finally transform the vision of Rio Salado into reality. Timing is very important, of course, because this is a very, very complex project. As I mentioned earlier, the, the infrastructure needs, the need to do everything below the ground and above the ground in the air with regard to power lines and sewers and so forth, all of that had to come into place. And then the, the main thing was the partnership with ADOT and the state of Arizona to reconfigure the river bottom and, and basically re Decide, decide where the water would go if there ever was a 500-year flood. Those are some things that just had to be done. And so the timing of all of that led to our situation around 1996, 1997, where we really got into the situation of, all right, we can do this now physically. Can we do it financially? And the council gave direction to staff to come up with a finance plan that made sense for today and for the next 30 to 40 years 
They brought that to us and we decided, you know what? If we don't do it now, it'll probably never happen. We're going to build Rio Salado. Uh, we got to the point where it was kind of all the stars were aligned. We had a set of construction drawings. We had low interest rates. Uh, we had a window of uh, financial viability within the uh, uh, city of Tempe to, to advance the funds. Uh, and it was, it was just its time. After two years on the drawing board, work on a recreational lake at Rio Salado finally begins today. At this groundbreaking, we celebrate the transition of the Rio Salado from a concept born in academia to a reality. With the turn of the spade, work began on the $45 million project. Four inflatable rubber dams, each 240 feet long and 16 feet high, hold back the water on the west end, while identical dams five feet high were installed on the upstream end. In the event of a flood, the dams are deflated to allow the water to flow naturally through the channel. One must always uh, remember that Rio Salado is a flood channel, and, and that was the premise for building the town lake, is, is underneath this water is a, uh, a soil cement, uh, it's a combination of rock gabions, and then uh, this uh, decorative uh, concrete uh, edge treatment that you see here, all designed to contain a 100-year storm event. In June of 1999, 30 years after the first concepts were drawn, water began to flow back into the Salt River. Today, we begin to fill the Tempe Town Lake on the Rio Salado. And the dream that this community has dreamed for over 30 years becomes reality. Two, one, and we'll crank them. In hindsight, uh, we always knew that if we kept to it, we would find creative solutions, find partners, find the capacity to overcome those challenges, and that's literally what we had to do week after week, month after month in those early years where it took to get us getting the decision to construct the lake in 1997. Almost one billion gallons of water later, Tempe Town Lake was filled and ready for its debut. Thousands of people gathered on a beautiful November day to celebrate this important milestone in the history of Rio Salado. And to the citizens of Tempe, this is your lake, this is your project, this is your legacy. from the failed county vote was, was that Rio Salado needed to be for the community. Um, not only the local community, but uh, on a regional basis. And because of that, uh, the non-negotiable component was a, uh, a park system that uh, wraps all the way around the lake so that if there was a public investment in building the town lake, that it was always for the community. And, and uh, that was uh, the most critical component to the project. This was part of the concept from the very beginning. There'd be, there'd be something for the developers because that was going to be the economic engine. But that basically we were building an amenity for the citizens of Tempe and an attraction for tourists from far away. <laughs> 